The author of this code, not me, managed to pack seven bugs into this code, and the code is only 52 lines long. These bugs are all related to memory safety, and if taken advantage of, can lead to the program crashing, or even worse, getting them hacked. But I wanna use this as a talking point to talk about how C is not a memory safe language. But first, what is memory safety? Let's talk about memory safety using some pictures. I like pictures because I'm kind of a dummy. If I am given a pointer that points into some memory location, like an array of ints, for example, here are my array of ints. A memory safe language will not allow me to create code and run code that indexes outside of this array. Or for example, if I have a pointer that points to a chunk on the heap, and then maybe this chunk gets freed. If I'm able to still use this pointer, it's referred to as a use after free or a UAF. Conditions like this where a pointer that you have access to points to memory that you don't actually control or own leads to your code being not memory safe. Who really cares? You know, my program might not crash. It's not really that big of a deal. The problem is if you give a hacker the ability to arbitrarily write somewhere, you're giving them what's called the write what where primitive, which is a primitive in hacking that allows a hacker to use use that ability to write somewhere to take over your program. There are different structures in the ELF binary on Linux, for example, called the global offset table. that are just a list of function pointers to functions in libc, one of them being printf, for example. If your code is able to arbitrarily write somewhere, they can overwrite the got entry for printf to point somewhere else that may have malicious code that they wanna run on your system. This code here has a pretty good example about how C is not type safe. It may be glaring out to you to some of you more senior C programmer, but here the vector new function is inherently broken. Why is that? We create a vector structure on the stack, we assign some values to it, and then we return a pointer to that structure on the stack. However, because that variable is stack allocated, if any new memory occupies that space, that pointer is now dangling to new data that is not the structure you originally intended. If you don't understand that example, let's go to a more simple example here. We create in this program a set of structures that are called points. Points have attributes X and Y. We create an array of 10 points, and then we say, which point would you like to edit? And then we index into that array and then set the X and the Y coordinate to 69420, obviously. The problem with this code is that the index can be any arbitrary length. It could be zero, which is within that array, but it also could be 110,000. Let's see if we can use this to prove that this program is not memory safe. So like I said before, the program does compile, but for right now, we're gonna run the program. What point would you like to edit, I like to edit point two because I'm a good user who's not going to abuse the system. Boom, and there's no issue. But if I'm a bad user and I wanna put in an index that is not in this program, I can do this number here and we have crashed the program. If this program were a little more involved with a couple more features where I get to choose X and Y, I could write an exploit for this program to give me full control of the system. The problem that I have with both of these pieces of code is that they both compile. While the first program does throw a warning, the second one compiles with no error at all. C inherently as a language allows the programmer to create code that is unsafe. Now you could argue that that is a problem that you should lean on the developer to fix and not the programming language itself, but the problem is humans are flawed. So when they write code, they're going to make mistakes. A language like C gives the developer too much trust and empowers them to make errors that it otherwise should not allow them to make. There's no reason why I should be able to access outside of the point structure, and therefore the language is not memory safe. Rust does not allow these bugs to occur. So here I have a structure called point, same idea, and I implement the new function on the point type. And then that new function, all it does is it creates a point structure on the local stack for this function, and it's mutable and it returns a pointer to that object, and we can use that to allocate a point. If you think about it, the memory dynamic is exactly the same as our original vector problem, where we create it on the stack, we set some variables and we return it. What Rust is going to do is Rust is going to use the concept of borrowing and say, at this point, P owns this point structure. We're going to return a pointer to P to a function outside of it. The pointer is going to live longer than the attribute that actually owns the point structure. And because of that, the Rust compiler will not build this code and not allow me to run it because 
I've violated the concept of ownership in borrowing by trying to return a pointer to a structure that is not owned by the person outside calling it. Based on this, the idea of ownership in borrowing in Rust is the concept that makes Rust a memory safe language. I do want to highlight that it is possible in Rust to write code that is not memory safe. However, to do so, you have to explicitly use the unsafe keyword. Let's talk about what that does. I've written two functions here. The first is a function read, where you can specify the parameter address and then use that address as a pointer and then dereference it to get data. If you specified a bad address in this function, you would get the data from that address, but you also could crash the program just like our C example. This is a snippet of Rust that is not memory safe, but you have to explicitly say that it is unsafe. Therefore, you're directly violating the language and what the compiler requires. And the same thing is said here in Rust, we have FFIs, that's foreign function interfaces. I can link in other libraries that are compiled by other languages. Like here I have libc where I can link in the C puts function. It prints a string and returns an I32. But to use that function, because it's thought to be unsafe, I have to wrap it in unsafe. It is possible to write non-memory safe Rust, but you have to do it very intentionally, which is not a direct use case for the language. I do want to highlight that memory safety does not directly imply security. Memory safety can lead to memory security, but all because your program is memory secure does not mean that it's wholly secure. If, for example, you're implementing an unsecure spec, your program may be memory safe and memory secure, but the idea of your program may be broken in general. Regardless of that, I really highly recommend that anyone who's new to program or even a veteran that's been doing it for 10 years, try a memory safe language. My favorite is Rust and use that as you go forward more and more and more into your projects. I do see a world where C and C++, maybe not in one year or 10 years, but in the future, will be replaced by languages like Rust that don't allow the programmer to make mistakes that have led to the major security vulnerabilities in the world. Before we go, I wanna tell you about a longtime supporter of this channel and the sponsor for today's video, Brilliant. What do the world's most successful and productive people all have in common? They all learn something new every day. And if you think that's too time consuming or overwhelming or hard to do, well, then I don't think you've tried Brilliant.org. Brilliant is the best way to quickly learn new math and computer science concepts. Brilliant is built for busy people, designed around bite-sized lessons that break complex topics into understandable parts. You won't sit through hours of lessons on Brilliant. Instead, you'll be able to master complex topics in as little as 15 minutes a day. Instead of just sitting through a presentation or watching a bunch of slides go across the screen, Brilliant lets you try things out and gets your hands dirty as you go. You can try everything Brilliant has to offer with a free 30 day trial with my URL here, www.brilliant.org slash low level learning. And the first 200 of you to sign up get a 20% discount off your first annual subscription. Thanks again, Brilliant, for sponsoring this video.